The Battle of Murbat took place on 19 July 1972 during the Dafar Rebellion in Oman, which was supported by communist guerrillas from South Yemen. Britain assisted the Omani government by sending elements of its special air service both to train soldiers and compete against the Popular Front for the liberation of the occupied Arabian Gulf guerrillas for the hearts and minds of the Omani people. Chapter 1 Battle At 6 a.m. on 19 July 1972 the FLOG attacked the British Army Training Team House, which housed the nine SAS soldiers, based just outside the port of Murbat. The FLOG attacked the SAS Bat House knowing that to be able to reach the port of Murbat they would first have to defeat the SAS guarding the approach to the town in Jebel Ali, a series of small desert slopes leading to the port. The officer in command, Captain Mike Keeley observed the waves advancing on the fort, but at first did not order his men to open fire because he thought it was the night picket coming back from night shift. The night picket were a loyal group of the Omani army positioned on the slopes to warn the Bat House of Adu troop movements. Realizing that the night picket must have been killed, Keeley ordered his men to open fire. Keeley and other members of the team took up positions behind the sandbag parapet on the roof of the Bat House, firing at the Adu with L1A1 SLR battle rifles, with one man firing the Browning M2 HB heavy machine gun, with a further two men on ground level operating and firing an infantry mortar surrounded by sandbags. The Adu were armed with AK-47 assault rifles, and were mortar bombing the area around the Bat House. Keeley ordered the signaller to establish communications with SAS headquarters at Amal Quarif, to request reinforcements. There were also a small number of Omani intelligence service personnel in the Bat House, a small contingent of Pakistani soldiers and a member of British military intelligence seconded to the OIS. They joined the team on the roof and fired on the Adu with SLRs and other small arms. Initially some of the Pakistani soldiers were reluctant to join the defense of the fort because their roles with the bat were largely administrative, but they obeyed orders from Mike Keeley and the British military intelligence corporal. Knowing that the SLRs would not be of full use until the Adu were closer than the weapons range of 800 meters, and lacking heavier firepower, Sergeant Taylisi Lobiloba made a run for the 25-pounder artillery piece, which was positioned next to a smaller fort manned by nine Omani Army Special Forces soldiers, who had not played a part in the battle. The Omani policeman who was guarding the weapon, had been seriously wounded. Taylisi Lobiloba managed to operate the weapon which is a six-man job, by himself and fire around a minute at the approaching Adu, directing their attention away from the Bat House. Keeler received a radio message from Taylisi reporting that a bullet had hit his face, he was badly injured, and was struggling to operate the gun on his own. At the Bat House Keeley asked for a volunteer to run to Taylisi's aid. Trooper Sekonaya Takavasi volunteered to go. Sekonaya Takavasi ran from the Bat House with the remaining men providing covering fire, in an attempt to distract the Adu. Sekonaya ran the 800 meters through heavy gunfire, and reached the gun emplacement. Sekonaya tried to give aid to his injured friend, while firing at the approaching Adu with his personal weapon. Realizing that they needed help, Sekonaya tried to raise the small number of Omani soldiers inside the smaller fort, and Walid Kamis emerged. The remaining Omani soldiers in the fort engaged the enemy with small arms fire from firing positions on the roof and through the windows of the fort. As the two men made it back to the emplacement, the Omani soldier fell wounded after being shot in the stomach with a 7.62 mm bullet. Adu continued to advance upon both the bat house and the artillery emplacement. At one point, the Adu were so close that Sekonaya and Taylisi fired the weapon at point-blank range, aiming down the barrel. Taylisi crawled across a small space to reach a 60mm infantry mortar, but fell dead after being shot in the neck. Sekonaya, also shot through the shoulder and grazed by a bullet to the back of his head, continued to fire at the approaching Adu with his personal weapon. The squad signaller sent messages through to the main forward operating base, to request air support and medical evacuation for the men in the gun emplacement. Captain Keeley and Trooper Tobin made a run to the artillery piece. Upon reaching it, 
they dived in to avoid increasingly intense gunfire from the Adu. Sekonaya continued to fire on the attackers, propped up against sandbags after being shot through the stomach. The Adu threw several hand grenades, but only one detonated, exploding behind the emplacement with no one injured. During the battle, Trooper Tobin attempted to reach over the body of Taliasi. In so doing, Tobin was mortally wounded when a bullet struck his face. By this time, BAC Strikemaster light attack jets of the Sultan of Oman's air force had arrived and began strafing the Adu in the Jebel Ali. With a low cloud base making for low altitude attack runs, only machine guns and light rockets were used. One of the strike masters was sufficiently damaged by a do fire that it had to return to base before using up all its weapons. Reinforcements arrived from G Squadron and, defeated, the Flog withdrew at about 12.30. All wounded SAS soldiers were evacuated, and given medical treatment. Trooper Tobin eventually died in hospital, directly to the gunshot wound to his face. Chapter 2 Aftermath the 25-pounder gun used by Fijian Sergeant Taliasi Lobiloba during the siege is now housed in the Firepower Museum of the Royal Artillery at the former Royal Arsenal, Woolwich. Though killed in action, Sergeant Lobiloba displayed remarkable bravery by single-handedly operating the 25-pounder gun, a weapon normally requiring four to six soldiers to operate. Lobiloba's heroism was a key factor in halting the Adu's assault on the emplacement, allowing time for reinforcements to arrive. Lobiloba was awarded a posthumous mention in dispatches for his actions in the Battle of Murbat, though some of his comrades have since campaigned for him to be awarded the more prestigious Victoria Cross. The following SAS soldiers were present at Murbat on 19 July 1972. Captain Mike Keeley Staff Sergeant Taliasi Laba Lobiloba Sergeant Bob Bennett Corporal Roger Cole Corporal Jeff Taylor Lance Corporal Pete Warm Trooper Sekonai Attack to Carvasi Trooper Thomas Tobin Trooper Austin Fuzhusi Keeley received the Distinguished Service Order, to Carvasi the Distinguished Conduct Medal, Bennett, and Taylor the Military Medal. These were announced three years after the event. An Omani from the fort, Walid Kamis, was injured during the battle and received the Sultan's Gallantry Medal, Oman's highest award. The battle was underreported, and many considered the SAS team deserving of further individual awards for gallantry. However, many in Oman at that time perceived a desire by whom government and the mod to downplay incidents of direct involvement of British service personnel in military action. The British Military Intelligence Corporal received a medal for gallantry from the Sultan, but was threatened with disciplinary action by the British Army for being directly involved in the action at Murbat. Chapter 3 In Popular Culture Sir Ranulf Fiennes alleged in his book The Feather Men that Mike Keeley was murdered years later in the Brecon Beacons by an Arab militant cell. However, the circumstances of Keeley's death suggest that this is somewhat fanciful as he was seen by other service personnel undergoing the same SAS endurance exercise only a few hours beforehand in deteriorating weather conditions, and was in fact found alive by a two-man search party, one of whom stayed with him, and attempted to keep him warm. It was later acknowledged by the coroner that one of the major contributory factors to his death was the delay of some 19 hours in recovering him from the hillside. Subsequently, the author admitted the book was fiction, and that no such assassinations ever took place. The battle is briefly depicted in the 2011 film Killer Elite, where it is central to the plot. The film is based on Fine's fictional book. The battle is also mentioned by Frederick Forsyth in his book The Veteran, where a member of the SAS team is murdered by two criminals 30 years after the engagement. The battle is referred to in Chris Ryan's Land of Fire, but is called the Battle of Murbach, the Adu are numbered in the thousands and Labba is replaced by a character called Tom who is wounded but lives. The battle is described in Roland White's Storm Front. The battle is also used as inspiration in the 2018 short film The Daycare.